Ivan Major, MBE, born in Christchurch, New Zealand in October 1939, profession speedway rider, four times world speedway champion, three times world long track champion, captain of the Exeter Falcons, businessman, author and journalist, a champion amongst champions. Nobody seems to want to go, come on lads, get it out of the way they go, and it's Major who hits the front end. Major hits the corner first and try the outside, the wide outside, but Ivan Major's made a colossal first turn, Major in front, Major after his fourth title, press and chasing hard. I'm always aiming to win, but, uh, it doesn't always make me that popular, I don't think, but uh, I don't really see it as any other way, second place really doesn't impress me very much and uh, to win, that's everything. I really just want to win as much as I can. I never ever in, in my younger days thought that I would be satisfied with one World Championship. Very, very hard, but it doesn't look as though he's going to catch him. He's coming up on the inside now. They're coming on to their last lap after this corner now. Person still cannot close that gap. How tantalising. On the last lap, the world title is only five yards between them. It wasn't always like this. Ivan and I courted very young. We were married. I was 16 and he was 17. We had what everybody would think very small chance at that age of making a go of marriage. However, we left home in New Zealand, travelled to England, where our first child, Julie, was born. We had so much hardships in those days. Well. I don't really like to dwell on it too much, but there was bed sitters. I'd stay home with the baby while I and travelled. Wasn't too much fun, but the compensations came later and put up with hardships as long as you think that there's something ahead. Ivan was very ambitious those days, as he still is now. Ivan Major truly is a Speedway superstar. After two decades in the sport, he enjoys the luxuries that it has provided for him. But few would deny him these comforts, having devoted all his adult life to achieving them, and in so doing, giving the sport the credibility it now enjoys. In 1957, he arrived in Britain with his wife, Ray, and young family as a penniless teenager. What he lacked then in material wealth, he made up in a consuming wish to succeed. Few of the many thousands of fans who idolise this slight, unassuming New Zealander will ever appreciate the full sacrifices he and his family have had to make. Speedway, like most other professional sports, has become highly competitive and therefore very expensive. When Major began his career, his one underpowered machine and the few spare parts that went with it constituted the major part of his assets. Now, a spacious garage attached to his home in the Manchester stockbroker belt is full of every conceivable replacement part. Nuts, bolts, filters, chains, plugs and highly tuned engines, tyres, tanks and racing leathers all adorn the walls and work benches. These are just some of the more obvious rewards for his acknowledged professionalism and dedication. The families really had to suffer a lot because um, there's been lots of times we've gone to, let's say years ago when, when we were racing in uh, New Zealand and Australia, there wasn't enough money for me to go to um, a track 2,000 miles away. 
<coughs> and take the family in, in comfort and but I needed the experience on those tracks and I needed to um, get a reputation all around in order to be brought back to England. Um, there was lots of things that really I had to do to further my career and there was never enough money for us to do it in, in any kind of style but they all went with me. We, you know, we, we often scrimped and scraved and done it, got there. They had to go without and um, <clears throat> I had to go without as well, but of course I was prepared to go without because I had something driving me. I wanted to be world speedway champion. All I wanted was a, probably a father and a, and a provider and a husband. But As Major approaches an important meeting, although he claims that every meeting is important, he becomes tense, uncommunicative and moody, characteristics hardly likely to endear him to the crowd. But it's all part of the driving passion that makes him want to win. This same intenseness is evident in his two days a week physical training sessions at Main Road Manchester and his occasional mechanical workouts at Bellevue Speedway Track. Man and machine being honed to perfection, or as near to it as he can get it. I train with footballers and I'm 10 or 12 years older than most of them and it's hard work to keep up to them but then a couple of nights later when I'm racing against speeder riders near my own age or just a little bit younger it's no problem to outstay them all night when, when maybe a few of them will halfway through the meeting I can still keep going. It's a sport that you've got to be really physically fit and mentally alert. I've got a slick bit of gate to start on here so I've only got to have about quarter throttle on otherwise I'll get far too much wheel spin. Let the clutch in very slowly. Not too many rears. That's gripping good. Keep it gripping now. Speed it on now, they come out of the corner. Shut the front off a bit to get the grip. On the heavy gate, you just got to wind her up quite a bit and just drop the clutch, not feed it out at all. And now the back wall is gripping good now. Ease the throttle up a bit to get some grip. Make a wider break. Turn back. Go out the line with the wheels in the line. It's four years now since Major was World Speedway Champion. At 37, he's a veteran in a youngster's sport. As each year goes by, more and more people are voicing I doubts about whether he can stay at the top. With seven World Championship titles to his credit and an almost faultless league record, Major's happy to ignore any speculation about his future and rely on his own fox-like intuition, which will warn him when it's time to hang up the leathers and turn to promotion and management. You know, I'm really not only a speedway rider, I'm quite a student of speedway. All my, all my years before I even was a rider and, and in my younger days as a, as a rider, I always observed the older riders, who was on the way out, who was on the way in. I do that now through the training schools as well. I've always got my eye on the 18-year-old, 19-year-old fellas, what they're doing and so on. And uh, I think quite a few with some of the old, older champions over the years, I've assessed when I think they ought to retire. And I think, probably for me, the time for me to retire will be when I realise I can't be world champion anymore, I don't really want to ride speedway anymore. And um, I really think that if, that if I'm honest with myself, and normally I am with my own performances, I think I'll be the first one to know that. And uh, I don't want to race when I can't be world champion anymore. As in most other sports, mental alertness is the key to speedway. As 
the tapes go up for the next heat, valuable points are won or lost before reaching the first bend. Major is determined to get to that bend first. Well prepared mentally is another big thing. We've got to be very sharp off the start and not only to win races, we've got to be very sharp to, to avoid a uh, serious accident, even death. had a, a lot to do with Ollie Olsen, he's world champion, one of the most devastating riders in the world and Peter Collins, uh, I was at Bellevue in, in Peter's first couple of years when he was getting going so like I'm about six years older than Ollie and 15 or 16 older than Peter I think so um, I think that I'm going to leave Speedway in good hands and uh, I'd like to be remembered probably in another 10 or 12 years as, as the person who got Ollie going and maybe Peter in his early days had done a lot, lot to help him when he, was, when he was a novice, well not really a novice, when he just came into the Bellevue team. I spotted him first, I got him into the Bellevue team. A lot of these things are not really direct man-to-man um, -man relationship where you tell somebody something, it's something that accumulates over a time. There's been lots of others, Scott Autry at Exeter and... Um, like in my time in Speedway, none of the old fellas ever really brought me on and told me sort of things I had to do. They would maybe tell a gear ratio, but not all the things that you've really got to do to be a champion. And um, I'd like to be remembered by that. I, I know in my, myself that what I've given to Speedway, which I changed the image quite a lot. I think I had a lot to do with that. It was years and years ago, it was a it was looked on as, as a Hells Angels, dirty, cinder uh, type of sport. And no one was really bothered about that image. That bothered me even before I was a star and before I started winning world championships or anything like that. And uh, that was one of the first things I'd done when I won the world championship. I thought I've <coughs> I'm more conscious of being world champion in every other country that I race at other than England now because the English Speedway fans and the promoters and even my co-riders in England have become accustomed to the fact that every year, I think probably except one or two in the last 20 or 25 years, the world champion has raced in England. So now really, uh, people in England ex just expect to have the, the world champion in the British League. The final race between these two Speedway giants, it's all between them now, Olsen and Major. Can Olsen do it? Can Olsen win this one? Stretches away in front. Of Oxford, remember, Muller's a long way up in front and going more than 
and someone. Around this bottom corner, there's enormous track, beautiful silver sand. There's Müller up front in second place, Weisbach. Olsen trying hard. Has it gone across the line? He's got it up, his hands up in signal. He's won it. Major takes the title for the third time. Olsen is second. Müller, with that win, is done enough for a third place. This year I wasn't world speedway champion, but I was world long track champion. Whereas financially, probably I'm much better off with one more world long track championship because it's four years since I was world champion now. But that's not to say that I wouldn't have preferred to be been world speedway champion. I'd like to get a fifth one. There we have the Crystal Glass World Championship trophy, which I'm very, very proud to present, I think, for the second time in 24 hours to our own Ivan Major. Well, I'm glad you gave it to me, Wally, because you were shaking a bit then. I thought you were going to drop it. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased and very proud to uh, get another World Championship. And uh, I've got World Championships for each of the clubs I've been to. And I'm very pleased to bring one down to Exeter. And uh, just hope we can get some more. All right. In 1949 time was my first introduction to Speedway after coming out of the services. And of course, it was a fabulous sport, 60,000 crowds at West Ham, you know, an ordinary stadium in London. With the coming of television, Speedway, like every other spectator sport, took a knock. And over the years, uh, it dwindled to just six tracks in what was then known as the National League. And they carried on for a few years, but it's a sport that will never die. It's a true family sport, and um, we now have uh, 19 tracks in the Gulf British League and 18 tracks in the new National League the uh, equivalent of the second division. Riders are coming from all over the world to Speedway. I mean, at Exeter here, we have Scott Autry, the American, top American rider. We've Ivan Major, who must be the number one rider in the world ever. I mean, as a promoter here at Exeter, in signing Ivan Major, I felt it was a terrific gamble because the top men, of course, are very expensive. It was a gamble that's paid off, and I'm very proud to have been associated with Ivan because Every club can have a number one, and a number one can, of course, score 12 points. He's so professional that everything he does is watched and copied. He leaves the starting gate, he looks for his partner. If his partner can get around the first turn, he will always sit behind him. Team riding is what League Speedway is all about. And there's no doubt at all that Ivan Major is number one in the world. Speedway and its bigger brother, long track racing, has become a lucrative sport and then only for a handful of superstars. At the bottom end of the scale, riders just about cover their costs. For the top stars, big money and endless silver, gold and glass trophies are there for the taking. At the height of a man's career, with World Speedway and long track championships under his belt, and taking into account widespread sponsorship, he could earn more than £80,000 a year. Most of that from appearance money at big invitation meetings around the continent. For the second string riders, however, who rely almost completely on British League racing, every heat and every point has to be earned the hard way. A few pounds starting money and a few pounds per point. Wreck an engine during the meeting or suffer an injury and there are hundreds of pounds out of pocket. Major's empire extends to interest off the track as well. He owns extensive property in New Zealand and writes books and newspaper articles. He lends his name to brand name items and devotes a lot of time to increasing his already considerable sponsorship. The number of hours he spends at his desk in his trophy room now far exceeds the number of hours he's in the saddle. He's a businessman who commutes around the world. His biggest problem is getting back to extra time to ride for his league team on a Monday evening. I 
centerpiece of Major's glittering trophy room is his golden bike, the gift of an American businessman who promised him he would plate the machine with gold if he won the world championship two years running. Major did, and the American kept his word. Originally valued at £8,000, it could now be worth four times that figure. To Ivan Major, of course, its worth is impossible to quantify. Major's choice of Stockport as his home base is no accident. Just a few miles from Manchester Airport, he can be airborne within the hour. The height of the season, he will cover over 2,000 miles within a week. Tonight, it's a comparatively short drive over the Pennines to Sheffield. Tomorrow night, he goes to Denmark, the day after to King's Lynn, then over to the continent for the weekend and back to Exeter on Monday evening. Wednesday down to White City in London, and Friday back over to Czechoslovakia. Uh, obviously over 20 years I've enjoyed many great moments, but um, this was one of the greatest moments when I received the MBE and uh, for services to Speedway. And particularly at Come From New Zealand, I've been very proud to wear our flag in so many countries over so many years, and to have this recognition, it's uh, really great. Heat number five, and away they go this time, and it looks like Major has got across. Yes, he has. Major leads from Crump. Mueller is last, really got scissored up there. Ivan Major really is looking as sharp as a spoke from the starts here. Superb gate then from this man. Now it's coming, Major stopped. Major's in trouble. Major's machine has stopped. And this is a tremendous upset. Yeah, and that's the piece that done it. It's a carburetor block, it's worth about a pound. And uh, I was really disappointed because before that happened I was, I was gating very good and really confident, thought that I could win it. If this hadn't have broken, uh, Peter Collins and myself would have gone into the last race with, with 12 points each and um, then it really would have been on the last race. I did beat Peter in the last race but by that time he really only needed, needed a second place but uh, as it happened I made the start so Peter had the job to do. I don't know whether he would have done it or not. It's, it's, to me that's, what, that's the world championship from last year. After a period of time you get used to certain disappointments. Naturally I was very disappointed when it broke. By the time I got back to the pits I thought, well, I've got to look to next year now. This is the first time I've, I've lost a world championship through engine failure. I, th I think it's probably, the, I can't remember that anyone else has lost a uh, world championship through engine failure before. I've lost lots of other minor championships through engine failure which hasn't bothered me very much. But, um, you know, that's a pound's worth. It's probably about worth about £60,000, that piece of zinc. That was 1976, but 12 months later, fortunes changed. The world client is worth something like £100,000 in perks for the next 12 months. We have Ivan Major, the old campaigner, bidding for his fifth, fifth prime. We have Ole Olsen, who indeed he taught so many of the rudiments of Speedway back 10 years ago at Bellevue. And just to make it a really spicy feast, we have young Michael Lee, the kid from Kings Lynn, on 10 points. And if Michael Lee wins this race, he could still be champion of the world. Any one of these three riders can win the world championship. They're coming up under starter's orders. The crowd are on their feet. Here we go. Third time of asking. And this time it's Major who makes the start.
is just a little bit over a lap from glory. A night of drama, a night surely of sensations, but what a night for Ivan Major. He's over the line, it's the last lap, he's just got to keep going for another, or oh, what, 380 metres, he looks over his shoulder, he's going to win it. Well, he squeezed through the Intercontinental Final, he really put out a fair old night, and there he goes, over the line. Major wins the title for the fifth time, he is second, Olsen's a long way back third, and will we ever have a night like this again in World Speedway? In fact, Leon Olsen now must run off for the runners-up position, Ivan Major is triumphant, an enormous crowd in the pits, just look at that tonight. I know won so very very badly he's had controversy along the way he's had a lot of luck along the way but there he goes up in the air and never mind the controversy never mind the luck he must be the happiest man in world speedway right now